Welcome to this Mastery Empowerment course. This is Sound, Alchemy, and Light Language. Transform your life with the healing power of sound. Jen Cunnings is a sound alchemist, and she is here to share an introduction to a larger course, Harmonic Sound Healing Alchemy. Hi, Jen. Welcome. Hi, Loren. Thank you for having me. It's so good to see you again. Yes, we love sound alchemy. It truly helps us move through uh, emotions. It's a very healing process. And when we're talking sound healing and light language, this is interesting because many people don't even know what light language is or why it works. Do you want to start there and share with us the power of these tools? Sure. Um, well, it might help to share also that light language actually came in for me before sound healing, which sounds almost a little backwards because sound healing with your voice and chanting and humming is probably an easier reach for some people. But for me, I had heard light language, gosh, maybe 15 years ago from Judy Satori, who was one of the pioneers in channeling light language. And I was like, I want to learn how to do that. I want to, this feels so good for me. And I, I didn't know what it was, but I just could feel the energy. And so I, I took a class with her, like I said, maybe 12, 15 years ago and um, got activated and then began to channel light language. And so light language is just this beautiful energy healing that comes through sound where we get out of our own way and we just ask that the energy come through from, you know, divine source, divine love. And it really goes past the mind into the body, into the cells and into the DNA. And we can layer light language with intention, with emotion, with just the, just bringing through whatever is needed for ourselves or the person that we're directing it towards. So, so light language began to just kind of come through in the shower. It began to come through while I was driving and I just began to play with it. And so I was just, I just wanted to have that experience and I was using it for myself and I realized, um, okay, this is something I need to share. And then I was so, you know, a little bit freaked out because it was way less known back then. And it's still a little bit less known, but, and I got the clear guidance to say, okay, you got to step past your comfort zone and you have to share this. This is going that you're here to share this for the benefit of others that is going to help lighten that is going to help expand that it's going to help heal so i began a um, weekly um, sound healing circle and i would bring my bowls and i would begin to just um, channel the light language and so i started to get this group of people that would show up weekly nobody knew what it was Everybody walked into the studio and they're like, I'm like, here we go. You're scared to death. They all left. They said, I don't know what that was, but I really like the way I feel and I'm coming back. So that began my whole experience to really bring that through um, for my groups and for my clients. And then of course, for myself. And then I um, took a sound healing class. It was called holographic sound healing. Um, Dr. Paul Hubbard, who lives locally in Texas, um, taught this four day class. And that was really about using your voice for toning, chanting, humming. And during that weekend, we worked a lot with the Hathors and other masters and angelic guides. And it was like, my heart felt like I had come home. Like I had awakened something that I didn't know was within me. It was dormant. And there was just this, like, just home, just this beautiful perfection feeling. So fast forward a little bit, I began to kind of integrate the sound healing and the light language. And um, of course, with anything that we learn, it ultimately morphs into our own, right? Because we all have this inherent innate gift within us to bring through sound, to bring through light language. And so I decided, okay, like after all these years with sharing it, I said, it's time to teach this. It's time to help people to access and unlock this gift within themselves. And so that's where I am today. And of course, I, I still use it for myself and my clients. I, I just did a retreat this past weekend where we did tons of that. And um, 
this course that I've got coming up is really all about helping you to open, access, activate your voice, your throat, your light language, and your sound so that you have a tool, whether you're a practitioner or just working on self-healing, you've got something that is, you know, you can pull out of your tool. I'm feeling stressed today. I'm feeling emotionally down today. I'm feeling, you know, overwhelmed today. Oh, okay. I can, I can actually use my voice to, to shift this for myself. That is the alchemy right there is using your voice to shift the feelings, to move through those feelings. And so, you know, Jen, what I find it very interesting is that um, you are a, a role model, like so many other people are on the stepping into speaking light language. Some spontaneously learn to speak it. Some know it feels so good within themselves and they'll just start speaking it. Some remember speaking it as children and shutting it down. And there's... Um, a resonance of love. There's a feeling of love when we say it. There's a comfort when it's spoken. Is that how we would each determine the divineness of it, the divinity of it, the sacredness of it? Is that you talked a little bit about the mind getting out of our way. So that is a key element. Um, so with that, I wanted to ask you. Are there any blocks? Because some report having a block, like maybe we feel embarrassed. That's a block. Um, did you experience any blocks as you were bringing this forward? And do you experience people that you teach having blocks that you help them move through? Absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. I am the Capricorn control freak, you know, judging, resisting. And so it, I had to work through a lot of those self-doubt, you know, not believing I would, I would, you know, I would open my mouth and allow the sounds to come through. And then I would question, I would, you know, judge, I would, you know, is this really working? Is this me or is this really coming from my divine being? And so it took me some time to unravel all those mental constructs and the resistance that gets in the way. And ultimately I, for whatever reason, I came up with this little trick and, and I just asked my ego to kind of go back here and take a little back seat. And so whenever I'm, whenever I'm bringing through the sound, whether it's light language or toning or anything, and then I hear a little voice come in, that's ego. I say, Hey, we're just going to go back here. We're just going to hang out back here so that we can open up that channel and open up our hearts and come from that loving space versus that, oh, I wonder if this is really working. Um, and what I've witnessed over time, because all those people who began to regularly attend my light language sound healing um, weekly things, they all activated their light language. And I've taught classes, I've been teaching light language for a few years now. So I've taught classes where some people activate right away. They're just spontaneous. And then some people just take a little more time and I give them practices and ways to help move through all those barriers because I, I had those barriers. I know what those barriers are in terms of what, what is resisting, because I do know inherently that our, our capacity, our ability to bring it through. We all have it. Nobody does not have this ability. And so the only thing in the way is ourselves. The only thing in the way is ourselves and our judgment of ourselves and the ego mind. Beautiful. And so What about people who would say, it's just my imagination. I feel like I'm just talking gibberish. Is there a way that you can distinguish the feeling that they're experiencing? Like, have you ever had people say, well, that doesn't feel right, or that feels strange, or is it really following the feeling and the feeling comes through when we surrender the mind? Right. Right. Three things that come to mind, because um, again, I experienced that as well, is, is to keep going. Like, so let's say you're practicing and you start questioning and you've gone for a minute or two. 
keep going, keep going for five, 10 minutes, because there's a point where the shift happens and you can really feel this, mm, just the, the tilting to the side that says, oh, I can actually start to feel the flow here. My mind is less judgy and disbelieving. And, and if you keep going, you're kind of breaking through some of those barriers that you set up for yourself. The other thing, and you'll feel it, as you say, you'll start to resonate with this. I feel a little lighter. I feel a little more expanded. I feel a little more loving towards myself. The other thing that I did and I recommend is to actually record it and listen and play it back for yourself. And if you're brave enough, send it to somebody else. Because what I realized is that when I'm being the open channel, I might feel pretty nice with it, but then I'll go back and record it and listen again. And then I'll get big, big surges, big hits of energy. And then same thing. So then I'll send it to somebody else. Hey, what do you, what did you feel here? So when I was all in this self-doubt, but I was still kind of making myself move through it, I would send it to people and they'd be like, oh yeah, I feel that, you know, hugely. I felt my heart open. I felt this block release. I felt, you know, tingling in my pelvis or whatever it was. Like they were having palpable energetic experiences when they were listening to it. Wow. Yes. When, um, we listen to light language, we can feel it, we can sense into it. It really is palpable, as you said. And so for those who really want to step in and speak light language, this is a really effective course to help them through it. Um, keep going for five to 10 minutes. You're going to do an activation for us and then maybe give us some homework to get out there and just start um, speaking it. Five to 10 minutes seems like a long time for anyone who started speaking it. Like if our ego mind is still in the way, we'll come in and judge like you come in and judge those words and say, you're, that's just, yeah. I mean, I don't want to keep going back and, and beating that one, but it's like, yeah, well, we do that. It's akin to meditation. Think about the first time you ever started to meditate with a quiet mind. You're in there 30 seconds and you're you know, your monkey mind's going crazy. It's kind of a similar experience where with, with, you know, attention, with practice, with, okay, I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes, right? Like I remember when I was first meditating and I, you know, monkey mind galore, I would just say, okay, 10 minutes. And, and maybe I would stare at a candle or maybe I would do some mirror gazing or, or something else to hold my concentration. Well, now you have it. Like, and, and if light language is too far of a reach, I would say, just start humming or toning or, and this is what we work on in the course we bring through or, or chanting. Cause the key is to really open up the space where we're in this flow of divine expression, because we've so much shut that down. And so part of this is really awakening our creation, our expression and our voice at such multi-leveled ways. So the light language is one facet and the sound healing is one facet, but it's really opening up our whole channel of our body and our being to express our pure divine creation. And when we, what I've seen over time is that when we engage the voice, because I've been doing energy healing 20 years, I know you've been on this road for a long, long time. I've just witnessed when we engage the voice with intention, with the energy, it takes it to another level. So I had, I'll just tell a really quick story. We were doing, um, we were doing uh, this womb healing in this retreat I led last weekend. And part of it was, was singing a mantra to different parts of our womb. And then we moved into um, connecting with our inner child and it just like brought up so much. And then everybody sang a song to their inner child. Beautiful. And that voice, engaging the voice and the song with the communion versus just kind of being in this silent space with your inner child, like it just opened up so much healing for, for everybody there. And I'm like, this is the power of the voice. 
Yes. Oh, we can feel that. I love that. So we're excited for this course because you're really a great teacher to show everyone how to really move through it and bring it forward and to open those channels. And it just takes practice. It takes a space where you're going to feel held and open. And so, wow, I love it. So when we start, there's an activation that you could share with us in this program. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get to experience that right now all right all right let's do it <laughs> i've got my little bowl i'm gonna pull over here and i'll um change this here so what i will um what i'll suggest is to just close down your eyes and allow yourself to just settle into your body without any attachment without any expectation to the outcome and simply just begin to breathe and open up your receiving. Imagine every little cell in your body expands just a little bit wider so that you are opening and expanding your capacity to receive here. And I'll also suggest to just drop your energy down into Mother Earth just feeling your physicality, your heart, connect with the heart of Mother Earth. Perhaps at the center you might envision a crystalline heart. Just taking a moment for your heart to meet the heart of Mother Earth. Taking a few breaths here. And then we'll take our heart and expand it out to connect with the heart of our divine self, the heart of Mother, Father, God, or Source, or your divine self, whatever connection feels aligned with you. Before coming on today, I, I pulled a couple cards and it's... The, the message here is to, to open our hearts to really connect to the multidimensional, the, the star family, the soul family, the origins of our being. So however you receive that, perhaps just opening your heart a little wider and expanding to all that you are, all of your being, all of your consciousness across all time, all space, and all dimensions. And from here, we'll just take a few breaths and allow that receiving to open up as we bring in the activation. As we bring in the sound and the light codes.
as we allow this to just settle into our body, into our DNA, allowing this activation to recode, to lighten, and to bring in everything to help you allow yourself to express this, to express sound, to express light language coming from your divine self, coming from love. Thank you for that. As we were each sharing our tone, we could feel the love and that connection. And that's the ticket. That's the task at hand. So we are feeling open to that and loving that. Beautiful. You got warm. You got warm. I know to see. <laughs> Yeah, that's no that I mean you you said that and that's interesting because we know that that's something going on whether that's an activation or some of your light body coming on but this is where we are open to source and we are shifting our vibration. So beautiful. Thank you. My my way of perceiving energy is I get really hot. It's not so fun but <laughs> <laughs> I love that we could do this and we can activate our voice 
And the sharing part is really key. So beyond this, this, this course is a way that people can add to their portfolio. They can create a business for themselves or add it to their tools that they share with others. We have many healers who are watching this. Right. And do you go over ways where people can um, get their business started? Tell us more about what goes on in this course, in the week course, a couple sure. weeks. Yeah, so it's it's five weeks and there's there's two parts. There's an online part where you can self-pace and you can have that forever, but we also get together once a week. And so to me, this is, this is the goal because we can learn and we can practice and we can kind of do things on our own. But when we get together and we share and we have these experiences and we share these experiences with each other, we are able to not only get the feedback, but we get the validation. And so I, I set, I set it up so that we have breakout rooms. And so we can partner up and have specific practices that we can do with the sound and allow you to not only um, share and gift and practice, but then to also receive. So there's a lot of healing going on throughout the whole course. It's not just informational. Here's your how to. Um, it's, it's very interactive. It's very give and receive. And so by the end of it, I, my, my intention is for everyone to walk away with these tools to implement in whichever way is optimal for you, whether it's just your own self-healing, your own journey, or to incorporate into your practice. So I allot time in our live interactions for questions like, you know, how do I incorporate this into my business? But in part of the curriculum and part of our experiences is so that when you, when we finish this course, you are comfortable doing a full sound session on somebody else. And you have that practice with, you know, your classmates. And of course, if you, you know, in that class, creating this beautiful container of lighthearted, you know, like-minded healers, light workers, then you can continue to create um, these relationships and practice, you know, outside of the course. So during that five weeks, though, we'll be getting together on that basis. And of course, the live events will coincide with the online um, course content, which is um, through Kajabi, an online um, learning platform. So my goal, because what I've found is, you know, online courses are great. And I, I have a few that are a standalone but I find that we really do receive the most when we have that engagement, when we can, you know, have that interaction, we can have the Q and A and we can have the practices. So yes. And everyone's energy in the group helps support everyone else. It's amazing that the people who come together for these groups, they're like family and friends can be made from this, especially because you're creating it. So people can practice with one another that's really key. The breakout rooms. That's the, that's the stuff they love the most. And of course, that's the stuff they're the most resistant of. So all the times oh. I've ever taught this, they're like, I don't know. I don't want to do it. You know? yeah, because we have most... to show up and use our voice. Right. And of course, that's where we hold a lot of our blocks, you know, so we're, we're healing our throats, we're healing our, our whole being as we break through, just like I did, break through some of these challenges, break through some of the places we, our, our throats were shut down, you know, where we, where we, I was told, you know, keep it down, keep quiet, right, where we haven't felt safe to speak our truth or express the fullness of our being, that's all interwoven into this experience because we are having to unravel all of that to really bring through the fullness and the trueness of our authentic voice, our authentic sound. And so once we go out, once we go to the break rooms and they get past that, you know, ah, then they come back and they're like, oh my God, that was so much fun. And we feel so good. And like, we do that some more. And that's their, that ends up being the scariest part. And then their most favorite part. <laughs> so yeah, true liberation. Oh my goodness. And feeling a shift in the energy and feeling confident yes. with, with that's the key I would say is feeling confident with the power of our voice to soothe and heal and to shift frequencies of our clients 
And so then as people take this out into the world, it really is a beautiful tool for them to share as well. As you were saying, we've got to share this. And on our planet right now, we definitely have a lot of tools. Everyone has a voice with the social media platforms, with the technology platforms that make somebody with a, a phone, it doesn't even have to be an iPhone, but just a phone that can take videos and you can be a YouTube star with that. Well, can we see the activations when people use these tools, these platforms for sound healing? That's exquisite. And so with 8 billion people here on the planet to help, yeah. This is beautiful that you're offering people a roadmap, a roadmap of how to get there and express this voice so that we can assist others in this empowerment way. I really love it. Thank you for that. Yeah. And the, and the one thing I think I shared with this with you last year is that I, I just received this in meditation and that each of our voices, the sound that comes through us is uniquely encoded and there's no just like our fingerprints, there's no one that is the same. And so that there is our own sound medicine through our voices for ourselves and of course others. But the message I received was that our voices is a specific sound medicine that is designed, that is unique for our own healing. And so, of course, all healing is self-healing, as we know. And I know, like, when I first took my few energy healing classes over the years, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go out and work on everybody else. And and really, we have to start at home. And so, to, to me, like, knowing that that, like, my voice is for me, yet I can also share it with many others. Um, that was, like, a huge, like, oh, my gosh. And, and I would, and the, one other thing that we do in the course that I find really powerful, and this was kind of another, um, just a download that I got was that I, I was shown how to go out into the quantum field, the, the, the potential of creation and gather up a manifestation an intention, a, a feeling, whatever it is, and then use the sound and or light language to bring that um, from the quantum into the physical reality. And so we'll practice that because it's a, our sound, our voices are a really strong manifesting tool. When we add sound to intention, it amplifies the manifestation. It brings it into, because our sound is here, right? We can hear it. So it's not just kind of out in the ethers. We're actually bringing it into form, into the, um, I see it as like a puzzle, like all these particles that are potential, potential creation. And then they come together to, to manifest into form. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that we get that. I was, you're also tele psychic or telepathic. I was going to ask you how we can use this for manifesting. And there it is. We, can you talk a little bit more about that? Because that is that is totally quantum. And that is what the Aborigines did. They, they sang things into form. Mm -hmm. And so um, can you uh, explain a little more on how we manifest with sound or what you do with the intentions? Really, um, it's like first connecting up here, first connecting with your intention and however you see it, right? Different people are going to experience, like I see it as stars. I see it as like star particles all out in the quantum field, but other people might have different experiences. So it's like, here I have my intention. Let's say my intention is to just feel more peaceful today even. Or let's say my intention is to manifest a new house, something in physicality. So it's like we can we can go out and gather up. It's like um, it's going back to the basics of we can create anything, right? The the potential to create anything is available to us, and the only thing in the way is ourselves. So if we can practice going out into the field, bringing it in, not only 
as we bring in the sound and or the light language, are we bringing it in? We're actually clearing the constructs that are resisting this coming into form. That's how I was seeing it. So it can take practice. Like maybe it's a five minute a day for you to go out into the field and bring it in. And you'll notice like the sound of your voice will, like if it's kind of clear and it feels really good, you're like, oh yeah, this is flowing. This feels good. And I'm this, I like this manifestation and I can, you know, really see myself, feel myself as if it's happening now, or it's like, oh, it's kind of clunky, you know, like your voice gets, you know, hoarse, or maybe you, it stops or, so then you get a feedback mechanism of how you're bringing that through. So we were practicing this this past weekend and like people were feeling it in their bodies. Everyone had a little bit of a different experience of, oh, I feel like this kind of pressure in my heart, or I feel a block in my throat because the only, if it, if it's coming through, then it's coming through. But if there's a block, then we can actually feel it in our bodies. And then we can go back and address that with sound. Does that make sense? Yes. And when we, you were leading us through the process that we did today, um, we could have witnessed it there. It, it was really interesting to see how um, the tone that I was bringing forward on mute was uh, very similar to yours and it was richer and it did make me feel better. And it was almost, there's this um, uh, multi-tone overtones in it as well and so we're really it seems like we're creating a hologram with a hologram of sound and so as we're manifesting when you go to manifest are you feeling are you putting the feeling of already owning that and so when you use sound are there different sounds that come out like uh, if there's a blockage then it could be something I mean I could feel that right now there could be something more Mm, determined in the sound that helps us move through the blockage. Is that um, fair to say in the description of how that works? Absolutely. Um, it, it's, it's of course, incorporating all the senses. Like I'm not so visual, but I'm really kinesthetic. I can, I'm a real feeler, emotional feeler, um, physical feeler. And so for me, that's where that those are the senses I'm engaging when I'm bringing that through. But for you, you might be more visual. So then you're going to be tapping into that. And then we notice, okay, what's our response? Like, does this feel aligned? And the one thing about voice and actually same thing with the bowls, um, because we will be playing with some crystal bowls and some instruments during the course as well. But let's our voice and even the sound of the bowls will sound different depending on what frequency they're engaging with. So let's just talk about the bowls for a second. So I have a client come in and I do this whole sound session. I've got my bowls, I've got my voice and I'm like, oh my gosh, everything's so like fluid and nice. And it sounds good to me. And it feels all lovely, beautiful. Next client comes in and then I start playing the bowls. And even before I bring sound out, the bowls sound completely different than they did an hour ago. It's crazy. And same thing with the voice. So it's where sound is needing vibration and sound is needing vibration. So when we begin to play with manifestation or whatever we're directing our sound to, we can kind of see like, what is this harmonizing or is this kind of like reverberating, you know? And then we get that feedback to see, oh, well, maybe I need to give some attention here. Maybe I've got some doubt, or maybe I have a heart block to bring in. Let's say you're wanting to call in a relationship, but every time you bring the sound in, your heart's like clunk, you know, or your voice goes. And so then we can start to, to inquire deeper as to, you know, what, where is my resistance? What do I feel when I'm bringing this in? Do I feel resentful? Do I have guilt? Do I have shame? Is there something that is beyond my awareness that I can begin to pay attention to? And then we can bring the sound in to say, I can begin to direct this to, to address this part of myself. That's the true healing. Uh-huh. Just uh, feeling into that and using sound to get over it. A very interesting 
Do you ever have people who begin crying in the middle of their toning or singing or light language? What is, what's that about? Is that just truth or? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we hold so much emotion in our bodies that we're not aware of. So, um, like I mentioned this weekend, we were, I had everybody, um, sing a song. I, I played, um, Cindy Lauper's true colors. And we had already been doing some inner child work. And then this, this was where we were going to sing the song True Colors to our inner child and have a little dance party with our inner child, right? But to open our voices and sing. And I, I don't know if there was a dry eye in the house, you know, because how much have we not fully given all our love or unresolved, you know, pain that our, our little ones are still holding on to? And so to me, that, that engagement with the sound just opens up the ability to move the energy and release any blocks. So and I'll tell you one more quick story about that is there's well several where I've been working with a client and they're on the table and I can feel this. I can feel it in my body is kind of how I work, but it's like, okay, we're working on this. I, and it just feels stuck. You know, I don't know what it is, or maybe I do. And I'm, maybe I'm talking through it with them. Maybe I'm trying different tactics to go into the body or to, you know, support them and feeling the emotion. And then I'm like, okay, <laughs> we got to bring the sound in because then the mind's all out of the way. Right. And, and it can really take down those layers of resistance because it's just going in there past the mind, past, you know, all the layers of resistance and it just begins to kind of crack open. And I, I can't tell you how many times where I'm like, all right, enough of this, we're going to the bowls or we're going to this, the, the sound. And then finally the emotion or the energy or whatever it is releases. They're my backup plan. <laughs> yes. And as you felt the heat in your body, um, we can feel the difference in our vocal cords, the richer, the rich, richer, richer feeling in the voice, the more uh, resonance in the voice, the flow of the voice. And so beautiful. You're doing an exquisite job really getting people into their service roles. What do you think about sound and light language that's so important for our planet right now? You know, I'm it's so interesting because I've noticed lately that I'll be in a group and, and let's say we're all bringing in some sound, right? What it, it might even clash. It doesn't matter. And let's say we have an intention to, I don't know, bring more peace into the group. And then we do that. Then we go out to the planet and it, every single time that intention goes from this collective, this, you know, this group out it changes it amplifies it it's like my body just gets these big surges you know and even this past weekend we were we were seeing um this kind of grid work around the planet um change and even seeing like pillars of light through and just it kind of morphing and changing and we happen, I don't know if this is too much information, but we were, we were in this place called Enchanted Rock and it is like, so I'm in Texas and it is the, if you look at a map of geography, it's the oldest land. It goes back down, back to like pre-Cambrian times, billions of years old. So in that billions of years old piece of land, it is highly charged. It's multidimensional, but there, there's also some not so nice energy because the, there was some sacrificing on this. It's this, this big dome anywho. So I, of course, is I'm, I've got 20 plus women who are all sensitive, who are all light workers, who are all healers. And we start feeling the, the leftover residue and even some of the entities and the energies that are still in there. And some people were even starting to feel ill because it was dense. And so we started doing work around that and literally like could feel some, some of the, um, the energies just kind of lift and lighten. And so one of my friends even asked me today, she's like, do you, do you think we changed the, the land there? And I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. 
Um, and, you know, many of us are called to different places on the earth to either receive or give or both, right? I've been called to um, Oklahoma where there was a bombing um, and I didn't even know why I just got led to go with my husband on a business trip for like a day. And I'm like, well, I don't, I, I don't know why I'm going, but I guess I'm just listening. And then about halfway up, I was like, oh. so anyway, it was rough, but um, my point being, sorry, I got, got pulled back into that re <laughs> that timeline because it was really <laughs> rough. But anyway, so I, I really believe that, you know, we're here to work not on ourselves. And then, you know, if we get to the space where we're like, okay, we're not in this anymore, then we're here to work on the whole. We're here to work on the planet. We're here to work on humanity, right? Because we, we are all one. And I know, you know, Lauren, we've, we've talked about this is that that's really our highest service work, right? As long as we are not negating the self because we still have some repressed stuff, right? I mean, it could be simultaneous and like, oh, I'm all, I'm a hundred percent in my Christ consciousness and in my enlightened rainbow diamond light body. And now it's time to go to the earth. It can be, you know, oh, I'm still working on myself and I can also begin to um, work with, you know, the whole, the all. And I do believe when we work with the planet, it, it expands out into other worlds. That's really come in a lot lately. It's like how much this is rippling beyond our earth into other you know. Oh yeah, I got chills on that, Jen, as you were sharing because, yes, um, you probably remember being in Lemuria, toning and singing to the ocean. I know many people do, and um, I, I I go to the ocean. There's a long and lonely beach where I go, and I can just tone with nobody watching or listening. That feels really good for me. But I wanted to share a story as well about the power. You know, you were saying that, yes, you did change. It does change the environment. It absolutely does. We can go to sacred sites like you did, and we can change the energy. I had, I'm going to tell a real quick story because it, it it's my truth of, wow, this really does work. One morning, early in the morning, I heard this loud bang. Usually in my house, it could be the ice maker in my refrigerator, but I was like, this is something weird. So I go out and there's a bird crumpled, like its wing is all this way and its other wing is that way. I thought it was not alive. It was like totally gone. Something inside me just said tone. And so I toned, I just started toning. I'm looking around, nobody's seeing me, but I'm toning at this bird. And I heard it very clearly in my mind, believe. So I kept toning. All of a sudden, after a few minutes, it took a couple minutes, the bird, little, the wings kind of came back in and it popped up and it was a baby owl. And then I ran and I grabbed, grabbed my camera. I was like, okay, I gotta go get my camera. And I went back and so a few more minutes, I mean, I took about eight minutes of video and the bird sat there with his eyes closed and it's just all there in a little ball. And I kept toning and then it opened its eyes and it looked straight at me with these little yellow and it was so beautiful. And I kept toning and the tone sound that came through because it was not my ego mind started. It reminded me of an owl and I wasn't doing that on purpose. It was just very interesting to witness. And I was really a witness at that point. And then the bird flew away. So this is how we can use our toning and not give up, not give up. Now, light language is a separate thing. I don't know about that. For me, I think I still have a block. I need your course. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that amazing? Because something happened there. Yeah. And I, I love that that owl was like that gift to you, right? To really own the power of your voice and your healing and your being and, and to get the message of believing, like it was, you were as much a gift to the owl as the owl was to you. Oh, thank you for that. I see the gift from the owl. Okay. Well, light workers galore, we have our voice to share with the world. And so for those who are feeling this empowerment, stepping into this new service role, sharing your voice, the power of your voice to help you in your life, to help your family in your life, and to help others, and to 
make a new service for the world, sharing your voice in a sound healing bath. We can do it literally in any format that we want. What else would you like to share for those who may be considering this course? Well, I'll tell a quick story similar to your owl is I was leaving the sound healing, that holographic sound healing course that I was telling you about where I felt like home and um, I sprained my ankle walking out. I think it was the second to last or the last day. And I didn't see the curb and I just stepped off. And you know how, like when you step off and you like your whole body weight lands on that side of your foot. And so it was like, I like fell down. It was like horrific. And so, but I was near my car. So I pulled myself up and I don't, I think everyone had already left anywho. So I I'm hopping in my car. Cause I can't put any weight on it. And so I get in my car and I've got about a 20 minute drive home. So kind of like your owl, it was like, okay, if, if I'm going to believe this, I got to do this, you know, it's got to go from here to here. And so I just started toning to my ankle and I would weave in some light language and spent the whole time driving home, just, you know, wrapping my ankle up, asking it to be, you know, just restored back to its, you know, divine blueprint of perfection and when I pulled up at home, I, I like gingerly stepped out. It was my left foot. So I could drive with my right and not a nothing, not a twinge of pain, not, not an ache, nothing the next day. And so I, I, that was like, okay, like there is my owl. And I just know that when we believe and when we layer with our intention, physically, emotionally, mentally, you know, manifesting, there's really not. There's, there's, I'm sure there's areas I've not explored, you know, like I've done it with, with elements with, um, I was snorkeling one time with these sharks and wow. we're on the boat going back in Belize. And I just started singing this song. I'd never heard, haven't heard since. And it, the boat was loud enough where nobody could hear me, but I was like, Oh, this is such a beautiful song. And of course I've never heard it again, but I was singing. Wow. I don't know what I was singing, maybe the water, maybe the, the, you know, there were sea turtles and stingrays and the whole thing. And wow. kind of like you with the owl, like we have the capacity to, to really channel everything, right? Trees, the earth, yes. you know, serious Pleiades, like okay. there's, there's no limit. And so, um, it, it, like you said, it's not us. Like we're, we're just the channel. We're just the instrument that we can kind of program like with the sheet oh, I've got a sheet of music that's going to help this owl return to life you know and and then we just sing it without needing to like know what it is so anyway that's my my ankle story but I I just I really believe that this is a gift that we we can utilize so much more than we we are right now Yes, and thank you for sharing this and and helping others express through the voice in this way because we're learning quantum physics and scientists, Dr. Norm Shealy, he's been measuring sound coming from sound healers, various people, mm -hmm. and it is scalar energy. It is, and maybe that's how we can feel it. Scalar energy is divine source and it knows exactly where to go. So with your ankle, that's a miracle. And there's a song, I need a miracle every day. We can make miracles with our voice. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, Jen, as we say goodbye, who is who is this course for? Can you share who this is good for? Um, everybody. <laughs> I mean, not to broaden the scope, but really just anybody who recognizes that, you know, I, I would like to enhance and broaden my capacity for self-healing. I would like to support my existing practice, whether that be, you know, anything from therapy to energy work, to your yoga class, whatever, whatever is going to be, because, oh, here's the other thing. Yoga. We don't actually have to vocalize it out loud. We can actually bring sound in just with the intention. So like, let's say, you know, you're, you're at a place where it's not appropriate you can still bring it through. And so, um, I love it because I feel really empowered because sometimes we get stuck. I have, you know, I have an infinite amount of tools of, of healing tools over, over, you know, my years of experience. And then, you know, then I'm like, oh, I feel so stuck today. What am I going to do? I'm like, oh, use your voice, silly, you know, remember? 
<laughs> so you can just pull it out of your toolbox. So um, it doesn't matter the sound of your voice. Let me also preface like it. I've had the most really interesting sounds come out of my body that are not pretty at all. So it's not about a pretty voice. It's not oh. about like what you actually sound like. It's simply the frequency mixed with the sound and anybody can do it. Anybody. Anybody can do it. So let's step up and do it and literally make this world a better place. We are bringing back this natural gift. We won't shut it down anymore. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Final thoughts. Uh, we start April 19th is the first live class and access to the online module is April 17th, I believe. So I thought I'd share that part. <laughs> Perfect. And yeah. so it's a beautiful way for people to learn on their own and to also have that group setting. Again, there's friends and family that you will meet from this experience. It's very rich. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. And thank you everyone for reaching into your light, for sharing your light. Now is the time on our planet. This year is a beautiful year for doing so as well. You can find this special offer right here on this webpage or anywhere in the link in the description box of where you're watching or listening to this program. Jen, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Loren. It's so good to be with you again. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.